This is RJ Podesky, and we are getting ready to start our Chapter 2 Android project, where we will design an Android app that includes an image and a button to go onto a secondary screen where we can see the details there. Um, so again, I've got Android Studio loaded up here. I'm going to start by, a, by clicking on Start a New Android Studio Project. And we are going to call this one Healthy Recipes. And we'll leave our company domain as androidbootcamp.net. And this is my project location, which if you remember from the first lesson, uh, we, selected, um, we selected a USB thumb drive, but you're welcome to select um, any place on your hard disk. going to keep my phone and tablet at API 15 Android 4.0.3 ice cream sandwich and going to click next and I'm going to select basic activity on the next screen through the wizard and press next and we're going to name our main activity as the default that's listed here, and we'll click Finish. Again, depending on your machine, this may take a little bit to build and render as it builds all the default uh, Java classes and XML files for your project directory. Um, you can see down here where it says indexing, it's still working. Um, so I usually like to just sit here and be patient until the full screen is rendered, uh, just like it is here. So we start like we did the last time where it says hello world in our uh, default uh, renderer. Okay, we're going to clear out this hello world text view widget because uh, we're going to start with something different. So I just highlighted that and clicked on the delete key. And I want to change my default emulator from the Nexus 4 to the Nexus 5. Um, 5 inch 1080 by 1920. So I'll select that to get my resolution set up the way I want to. Alright, now as we did in the first lesson, we are going to go back into our strings.xml file and see that our default values are listed here for our app name uh, and our action settings. We're going to go into the translations editor and we're going to add um, several keys uh, by clicking on the add key here at the top. First we're going to add is txt title and we are going to have the default value as bruschetta or bruschetta recipe. And we will click OK to add that. You'll see that that is listed here under our new key name. And we are going to add several more here. So feel free to just follow along. I'm going to add one for our recipe image here. So we have a placeholder for it. We're also going to be creating values for the button to allow us to view the recipe. And we can't make bruschetta without ingredients. We will add that default value there. several more items here in just a second along with some directions and uh, some uh, mixing instructions as well to make the recipe. Uh, but so you don't have to watch me type so much, I'm going to pause this for a second and populate the rest of our translation editor with those items and you can take a look at these and, um, and catch up on your own. 
All right, so our translation editor now should have all of these values. Um, you see that I have now have four TXT items for all the individual ingredients, uh, some mixing instructions, and then we also have our ingredients that I think I had there earlier. So at this point now, I'm going to go ahead and save the project to be safe. I'm going to close my translation editor and my strings.xml file. You'll see that the translation editor placed all of those there inside the strings.xml for me. And I'm back to my content main.xml. Our next step is actually to start placing some of these text objects uh, onto our palette so we can start to organize them. So here in our, uh, our palette list of widgets that we can place onto our screen, I'm going to begin by dragging the text view widget onto the top of the emulator. And I'm going to drag this until it just centers, and you'll see the dashed line there in the middle that indicate that the emulator has the text view widget centered. I'm going to release and drop that. And then I should have my properties uh, palette over here to the right where I can then provide the details for this text view widget. We are going to label this as TXT title for our object ID. And under the text listing for our text view, we're going to click on the ellipses here just to the right. From here, it'll allow me to select the items that we put in our translation editor, uh, which is the strings.xml file. We're going to highlight TXT title, and we're going to click OK. That text is just a little tiny, so we are going to change the text side, size of this from 14 to 40 SP. And so when you use the SP notation, that stands for Scaled Independent Pixels. That's going to size that properly based on whether you're using a phone or whether you're using a tablet. So it's going to scale it based on the dimensions of the screen for you. All right. Next thing we want to do is place an image right here in our, um, in our design emulator. Uh, but first we have to copy that image into our project folder. So located uh, here inside of uh, one of my uh, one of my file explorer folders, I've got a picture of some uh, finished uh, bruschetta, and I am going to drag that. Excuse me, I'm not going to drag that. I'm going to I'm going to highlight that file and copy it using Control C. You could also right click and select copy as well. I'm going to switch back over to my Android Studio, right click on the drawable folder here from my project pane, and I'm going to paste that image here. I'll get a dialog box that confirms the name of my file and the directory location. I'm going to click OK. And if you expand this folder now, you should see the file Bruschetta underneath the drawable folder. My next step is actually to place that image on my emulator. Uh, the image view control is in our palette, um, but we're going to scroll down to images and media, and then we're going to click and drag our image view control, centering it again as best we can, and then selecting from our available resources. And we can see that it's now pulling the bruschetta image into our um, into our available resources. I'm going to click OK so it places that. That's a little lower than what I wanted, so I'm going to move that up just a bit. That looks better. And now I'm going to go over to our properties and label this IMG recipe. Now, no different than 
building a website, if we do place images on a website, we would want to list a description of that image for accessibility purposes. So under content description, we are going to select our three ellipses again, and we are going to highlight from our strings.xml file our description text that says recipe image and click OK. That way if for accessibility purposes someone with uh, a visual impairment uh, a screen reader would be able to uh, let them know that it's an image um, of the finished bruschetta. Our next step is to add a button to our emulator, to our app, so that we can go to some details to actually view the recipe. So again, from my palette, I'm underneath my widgets, I'm going to select a button control, and I'm going to drag that into the center of the screen, again using that dashed line to help us center it properly. It'll put the default button there for us, but we want to give it a more appropriate, meaningful name. We're going to call this button recipe. And under text view control where it says button, we are going to select our btn recipe from our strings.xml file. Let's make the text of that a little bit larger. Change that to 36 SP. And we now have our button added to our app. The next piece that we're going to walk through is building a second screen, if you will, that allows us, once we click on the View Recipe button, to actually engage in that activity and move to that new screen. So I'm going to close the content main.xml window for the time being. And here's our uh, main activity Java. So this is the Java file and the code that was built for us when we selected the blank activity. What we are going to do is to create a second Java class for our new screen that we're going to create. I'm going to expand the Java folder from our project palette, our project pane over here. And I'm going to right click on the very first net.androidbootcamp.healthyrecipes listing here from that folder. And I'm going to select new and then walk down to activity and select basic activity from this list. It's going to largely look just like our beginning screen when we created our project, only we're going to give this activity a new name and we're going to call it recipe and we're going to give it the layout name of activity recipe and leave the rest as default and click finish. You'll see that now gives us a new pane here at the top called contentrecipe.xml and a recipe.java file. If for some reason yours creates this with a hello world text view control here, you can go ahead and delete that like we did earlier. Now we want to add the details for our recipe onto this screen. So we'll be following the process that we did earlier by dragging a new text view control to our screen and centering it. And our text ID here will be txt title 2. But we will again select our txt title so we have the details here. We're going to change our text size to 40. You may or may not have to move that up or down depending on where you drug it onto the palette. I'm going to align this next one for the left against the left side, and we're going to call this TXT ingredients. 
and select our TXT ingredients from our strings.xml file. And we're going to make the size of this 30. Again, size these where you need to. The next four text view controls that I'm going to list here are going to be slightly indented and aligned. And we're going to create these as TXT item 1 through 4, selecting them again from our available resources, and setting the text size to 25. To continue to do this for items two through four. Now that I have my ingredients listed, I'm going to create one more section here that lists our directions. and aligning that with my indentation from above. My last one is going to be TXT mix for my instructions or directions and making the text, text size 25. And that's off just a bit. We'll realign that. Make it nice and neat. Okay. From here, I'm now going to save my project. Now that we have both of our screens developed, we need to add some Java code to uh, our recipe.java to understand how these will be, uh, how these will interact with each other and move from one class to another. I'm going to close my content recipe.xml, and you can now see our recipe.java file. In order to make this a little bit more readable um, and follow along, I'm a fan of always viewing line numbers when I'm looking at code. So I'm going to click on View at the top, go to Active Editor, and select Show Line Numbers. Now I've got my line numbers here from 1 to 30. I'm now going to switch over to my main activity.java file, and I'm going to do the same thing so I can see the line numbers. Now, some of this code was created automatically by Android Studio when we built the project, so we can, uh, we can remove some of this code. But this time we're going to get rid of everything from 18 all the way down through here, not including the last brace. And I'm going to cut that, and I'm just going to paste that in another notepad file, just in case I need that later. It looks like I did accidentally take out one too many braces. to take out a couple more lines of code because so we're going to change some details there. So from here I'm going to initialize and reference the button control that I built earlier from the main screen. Okay, you can see that we've got some unresolved references here, and saw earlier we had a little bit of uh, 
tooltip text there that says press alt enter and that will resolve it for us which we're going to and Java is a case sensitive programming language so do make sure that you have this exactly including the case as I have listed here okay we're going to continue to build this out here and we're now going to code the button listener that's awaiting our user interaction so we're going to type button.set on and again you can see the uh, code completion that our Android Studio allows us. Um, so we're going to do button dot set on to display our, our autocomplete listing here with some possible entries. We're going to select set on click listener. It'll populate that for us. And then inside we're going to instantiate a new on click listener. And you can type, you can press enter, but that kind of does that on us. Um, so we really just want to, uh, actually we do want that. So I like to press enter. You're also welcome to uh, double click uh, from the autocomplete listing. And this now creates a new on-click method for us to add some details. We are going to start an activity and select that and we are going to have a new intent and we're going to type main activity dot this referencing this object and recipe dot class. So now that we have that built, going to save all of our code. And one thing you should double check for is check to make sure you don't have any red squiggly lines underneath main activity dot java, recipe dot java, or any of your project files here along the top. If so, it indicates you may have an error in your code, most likely syntactical. Um, and so look through here and double check to make sure what you have is exactly um, as I have here on the screen. And here's always the fun part is we're going to go ahead and press play and we are going to select our Nexus 5 and click OK. Let this project get built and watch our Android emulator pop up and see how our app works. Again, this does take some time, so be patient. Let the emulator come up, um, especially depending on how much memory you have in your machine. And our Android phone is booted up here, and we should have our app displaying here in just a second after the phone finishes booting. And here we go. Here's our bruschetta recipe. Looks tasty. We can click on the recipe button. And we see the details with our plum tomatoes, basil, garlic, cloves, and olive oil. Combine them and throw them on your French bread. And again, we can use our Android uh, mobile uh, emulator to go back just like we would on our device and we can view recipe again and now we've created an activity that allows us one screen and a button control that allows us to go to a secondary screen so hope this was helpful for you and we'll continue to progress through building our Android app so thanks again